Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome back to another embroidery project. So today we are going to be embroidering this little doggy and a raincoat. He is going to be a pretty knock on wood, quick and fast, easy embroidery project, but I'm really excited. I love my dachshunds and this was such a cute design. It actually came for free when I purchased this dachshund design, which cannot wait to work on that one. But when I was working on drawing this design and showing y'all how to use your Cricut to draw an embroidery pattern, um, I decided why do one when you can do six? So I lined up all of my projects and I've got plenty for the upcoming future. So today we're working on this guy, but make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to be doing all of these over the next couple weeks. Let's get started on this guy. Right, so we have done quite a bit of this doggy. I have left the upper part of his jacket to finish and his little left foot. So for the foot, we're going to be doing a uh, back, back stitch. Not quite sure if that's the right word. I'll put it up on the screen if that's wrong. But we are going to be coming up on the very left hand side and we try to make our stitches equal as much as possible. So we're going to come up just a little bit out, one stitch length away, and then we are going to go backwards right up to the pink here. And we're going to make one stitch. I'm going to go ahead and secure my thread on the back. You can either make a knot or you can go over the stitch. This is a washable fabric pin that I use with my Cricut, so I'm going to be tossing this in my washing machine after this to make sure it is all this extra blue is gone. Uh, so we want our we want our thread to be very secure. Very secure. And I am using two threads for this back stitch. And I'm using a kind of cottony thread for the blacks. That's what I have and I am not a fan. It's not very smooth. I definitely want to get more of the Set me like st st thread. All right, so now we're just going to come back up one thread away. This, as you can see in the back, is going to go over that back thread and tack it down. And I'm going to keep going over that back thread as we go all the way around the foot. So now we're going to come back up. And we're going to go through that same spot where we came up at the beginning. And that is the back stitch. So we will do this all the way around the foot. And this is where a satin thread would kind of pull through without getting tangled. So one stitch away, dun -da -da -dun. making sure I'm going over that back thread still. And I had a question recently on one of my embroidery posts from a newer embroidery person like me, where in the, in the kit it says to cut off an 18 inch length of thread. And they said that I didn't do that, which is true. Um, I am new to embroidery. I am not new to needlework or sewing. I've been sewing since I was five. Um, so while it says 18 in a lot of beginning tutorials, that is really a suggestion for a easy to handle thread length. You're not going to have as much of this, you know, nodding and drama with your thread, the shorter your thread is. You'll have to start and stop it more often, um, which isn't an issue like here where we have you know, several areas where the black is, I've had to start and stop it regardless. Um, but 
that is the main difference between working with a longer thread and working with a shorter thread is just the ease of using the thread. So you can feel free if it's easier for you to handle to work with a shorter thread or if you would prefer to not use a shorter thread so you don't have to start and stop it, have as many knots in the back to use a longer length of thread. That is really a guideline or a suggestion, kind of like a party. Tugging that back thread and you can knot it since this is on a hoop, it's not going to make a bit of difference, but I just don't, I don't know. My mom always taught me not to knot my threads, which is funny. I was doing a, some work with my best friend. She's doing a, uh, a really pretty dishcloth right now pattern. And she said when she was taught, her grandma taught her um, that she taught her to knot the heck out of her threads on the back of her pieces. Whereas my mom taught me to kind of just weave in those ends. Oh, it's interesting. Different way people do things. Neither one is wrong as long as they hold. <laughs> I probably wove it in enough now that I could cut it, but I typically just weave it in until it's done. If you're having trouble with your thread like this, and like I was saying, using a different thread, like a silkier satiny thread as opposed to a cotton, you'll have less issues um, using a higher quality fabric. You'll usually have less issues using a shorter thread. You'll have less issues just depend on your materials and your ability. I do also have way less issues when I'm doing this uh, closer to my face, doing it all the way out here at the edges of my fingers so that it's filmable, gives all kinds of issues. All right, so we've got our little foot done. And I've got my pink thread now so we can finish his jacket. So for all of the rain coat and his little rain hat, we did everything the exact same way. We back stitched the entire design, which you can see here. And then we came up under those back stitches right here. You can see we're just under this one on the left. And we're just going to go straight across, just satin stitch straight across, big satin stitches. Now, the only thing you really want to keep track of is that you are going straight across and then go under the stitch on the other side. Since our stitches are so big here, especially across the width of the hat and the coat, if you get off a little bit and your stitch is crooked and not straight, it really does make a big difference in the, the look of the coat. You can see here on this left part of his jacket, I didn't make a big effort to keep those stitches straight. I made them just back and forth, back and forth, and they are not as even and smooth and pretty. Um, which is okay. I kind of wanted to, to see how that would look. And I, I definitely like the look of the smoother coat, but with the two textures right next to each other, I kind of wanted that difference in texture just to show like, this is a different part of his coat. 
So, you know, I could have made it all this straight and I could, I mean, I could rip that out and redo it, but who wants to do that? So we're just gonna keep going and sometimes I find it easier to come up a little bit and do a stitch straight across a little further way up. That way we have kind of a guideline for those up um, in between stitches. So this one is going to come right across here. We're going to start going into this curved line. So if you're not sure where that straight edge goes, you can just pull the thread across and then put your needle where it hits. So this guy right here should be much straighter. There we go. So we're just gonna keep filling in all the way up until our little coat is done. all done. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this guy out of my hoop and I'm going to go toss him in the washer. This is a washable fabric pen so it will all this blue will come off with a wash. He will sometimes come off if you just kind of hand wash him with a little friction but I just toss him in the washer on a rinse cycle when I'm rinsing other things or sometimes on his own. I'm impatient. So give me a second and we will be right back with this guy. I'll clean. Let's go girls, come on, let's go to the office. All right, we will have to finish this guy up, but he looks perfect. I don't see any of those blue lines. So I am very happy with washing this guy. And we're gonna go ahead and put him with his little friends and call it a day. We've got a couple more hoops to work on. Bye.